On April 1st, while the world scrolled past April Fool's headlines, China pulled off something very real and very strategic. A Long March 2D rocket silently delivered four experimental satellites into low Earth orbit. But these aren't just any satellites, they're part of China's push to build its own Starlink-style internet constellation, and maybe even more. So what's really going on here? Why is China testing satellite internet tech now, and why does it matter? Stay tuned, because this is much bigger than it looks. Who's building and why? Let's start with a simple question. Who's behind these satellites, and why aren't we hearing more about them? On paper, the launch came courtesy of the Long March 2D rocket, an old workhorse in China's growing fleet. It carried four small satellites into orbit, labeled 0001 through 0004. And here's where it gets interesting. The mission was announced by the Shanghai Academy of Space Flight Technology and then confirmed, without much detail, by two commercial companies, Changguang Satellite Technology and Galaxy Space. Now, both of these companies are technically commercial, but in China, the line between state and private isn't so clear-cut. These firms often act in close coordination with the Chinese government, which means this mission could very well be part of a broader state strategy. And that strategy? To build a fully independent satellite internet infrastructure, one that ensures China doesn't rely on any foreign systems like Starlink or OneWeb. Given the geopolitical tensions around tech sovereignty and data control, this makes perfect sense. China wants its own space-based internet. No foreign filters. No foreign satellites. Just full national control. But here's what's curious. China didn't release any images of the satellites. There were no public specs, no clear details on capabilities. In the name itself, Satellite Internet Technology Test Satellite couldn't be more vague. If you were trying to keep the real purpose under wraps, this is exactly how you'd do it. So why all the secrecy? Is it just commercial competition? Or is there something more? Given China's parallel military-civilian integration strategy, these test satellites could serve dual purposes. On the surface, they're there to test broadband technologies. But with phased array antennas, Kaban communications, and precision ground connectivity, they could also support military networks, encrypted communications, and even battlefield command and control systems. What's being tested and why? The official line says this launch is all about technical verification. That sounds dry, but it's actually huge. So what are they testing, exactly? The primary focus is direct-to-sell satellite broadband. Think Starlink, but where your smartphone connects directly to a satellite, no dish required. This is cutting-edge stuff. SpaceX and AST Space Mobile have been experimenting with similar tech. China is now jumping into the race, and these test satellites are essentially prototypes. They're experimenting with Kaban frequency payloads, which allow high-speed data transmission, great for video streaming, secure communications, and real-time apps. Kaban isn't easy to work with. It requires advanced antennas and solid power management. Testing it in orbit means these satellites are equipped with serious tech, thermal control systems, propulsion units for orbit maintenance, and possibly phased array antennas that can electronically steer signals without moving parts. And it's not just about the satellites themselves. It's also about how they connect with the ground. The goal here is to build an integrated space ground network where data flows seamlessly between users, satellites, and control centers across China. This isn't China's first rodeo either. Since July 2023, they've launched at least five other missions under the same vague Internet Tech Test banner. Those launches used a mix of Long March 2C and the newer Long March 12th rockets. Each carried a handful of satellites, testing propulsion, antenna design, power systems. The trend is clear. China is working systematically, refining each generation before mass deployment. But here's the kicker. These satellites aren't officially part of the Guang or Thousand Sales mega constellations, China's two planned mega projects for LEO internet coverage. So what are they? Most likely, they're pathfinders tech demonstrators that feed directly into those larger constellations. If Guang is China's Starlink, these satellites are the secret labs testing the gear before the big rollout. Civilian tool or military asset? So far, we've looked at the who and the what. But now comes the most important question. What does this all mean? 
Let's start with the obvious. China isn't building this infrastructure just to let people stream movies in rural provinces. Sure, nationwide internet access is part of it, but so is control, security, and power projection. The lack of transparency, the secrecy around specs and images, is telling. In the past, China has used similar language for launches that later turned out to have military applications. The integration of Kaban systems, ground network testing, and phased array antennas all point to potential dual-use purposes. And this fits into a broader pattern. In 2024, China launched three high-orbit internet satellites into geostationary orbit. Just like these LEO ones, no details were released. All we know is that they're also part of this expanding communications web, and geostationary coverage is ideal for persistent surveillance, military comms, and strategic command links. So, could this be a military internet cloaked in civilian terms? Possibly. China's strategy of combining civilian tech with defense use has long been documented. And in space, that dual-use line gets blurry fast. A satellite that connects phones can also relay encrypted orders to military units. A phased array antenna that beams Netflix to your phone can also guide a drone or hypersonic missile. But here's what's even more strategic, space independence. China doesn't want to rely on Starlink, OneWeb, or any US-affiliated network. That's a security risk. These satellite programs, whether Guang, Thousand Sales, or this test batch, are about building a sovereign digital infrastructure in orbit, a system no one else can shut off, jam, or control. And globally, this matters. China is already offering telecom infrastructure to countries across Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Once their satellite internet is operational, they could offer a low-cost alternative to Starlink, especially in countries that don't trust Western providers or can't afford them. That's not just telecom, that's influence. So yes, it's about internet, but it's also about diplomacy, defense, and dominance. This launch may have been quiet, but the signals it's sending couldn't be louder. On the surface, it's just another launch, one of many in a year that might see over a hundred. But dig deeper, and it becomes clear, this isn't just a test. It's a message, a strategic, technological, and geopolitical message. China is no longer experimenting. It's scaling. It's building. It's preparing. These small satellites might seem insignificant, but they're part of a much larger web. A web of ambitions that includes global internet coverage, military applications, and technological sovereignty. Whether it's Guang, Thousand Sales, or these mysterious test satellites, the trajectory is set. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.